Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Natsu Basho Day 9 coming up. Yesterday, eh, 8 out of 20, not good. In fairness to, I guess, my thought process, or just trying to make myself feel better, Midori Fuji, Satanoumi, and Kagiyaki all had their matches won and just managed to find a way to lose. Midori Fuji's especially was, oh, I am winning, oh, I am going to slip and fall. That was super duper unfortunate. But it is what it is. The randomizer got five of them right. I only picked four. Now, four out of eight, 50%, that's what you expect out of the randomizer on you know the long term. So it did better than average. That is positive variance in my favor. I'm not saying that the dice are smarter than I am, although they might be. We just need more evidence for that. And we're going to do it. We are going to do the random thing for the rest of this Basho, see how it goes. I'm just curious, and I like rolling dice. Okay, that aside, let's get into the picks. Midori Fuji and Chiono Kuni. Chiono Kuni has a 2 to 1 lifetime record against Midori Fuji. Under normal circumstances, I would say, oh, you know, he's been in my Gashira a long time. He's definitely the better wrestler. He has a good record against this guy but he looks like a broken man right now. Midori Fuji really should be 5-3. and three. Yesterday was very unlucky, so he should win. I really feel for Chiono Kuni, though. I hope he gets better and gets back to the top division. Koto Kuzan and Oho. I cannot believe I am picking Koto Kuzan for this, but what I said yesterday was he's going to win a fight when the other guy just kind of gives up. I didn't expect it to be Hidenoumi, but that's exactly what happened. Dude had no fight in him. Koto Kuzan fought Oho four times in five tournaments from last May 2021 through January. He won the last three. Oho won the first. Now, given the way Koto Kuzan's fighting, I don't know necessarily that that would be enough to pick him, but he got his win, and I would still pick Oho if Oho was really putting up a good fight in his matches, but he isn't. He's, you know, he's kind of putting up a fight, and then he's just sort of stopping, getting walked over. I don't understand what's going on. There's no spark there. This is the kind of fight Koto Kuzan can win and needs to win if he wants to salvage anything resembling a not completely god-awful record. I think Koto Kuzan wins this. Chio Tairu and Meisei. Chio Tairu is on a pretty nice roll. Meisei's fight went exactly the way I thought it would against Midori Fuji, except for the fact Midori Fuji slipped and fell. And I think Chio Tairu is one of those guys who has seen Meisei at the top of the pile long enough that he especially is going to take advantage of this opportunity to just smack the hell out of a broken version of the guy. Chio Tairu to win. Sadano Umi and Kagiyaki. Sadano Umi has a 10-7 lifetime advantage, and weirdly, these two have traded two wins or three wins at a time for the entirety of their head-to-head -head in their careers. It's always been exactly two wins in a row or three wins in a row. Satan Omi's won the last two, so he still has room for a third on that basis. He also absolutely should have beaten Ichi Yamamoto yesterday. He had the fight won, and then Ichi just somehow... I should call him Ichi. I should be really careful about the pronunciation there. Ichi just somehow slipped it and gave him enough of a push to get him out. I am blown away that that fight turned out the way it did, but Sadan Umi was definitely in the driver's seat for the whole thing until the end. Kagiyaki lost a fight. I think he should have won, though granted those two are close head-to-head, -head, him and Nishikigi, but Sadan Umi is simply doing really, really well. Under normal circumstances, this would feel more of a flip than it is, but I think... Sadano Umi, until proven otherwise, should be viewed as a favorite against anybody who is not clearly better than him. Ichi Yamamoto and Chiyo Shoma. This is another matchup where the two have only fought once. Ichi Yamamoto seems to have that one win in these matchups somewhat frequently. You know, random chance, I guess. Ichi Yamamoto, like I said, he's very streaky. He won five in a row. He lost two. He really should not have won yesterday. So that's three bad fights in a row. This puts me in a state of mind where I think, oh man, this could snowball really out of control. However, 
he certainly came forward yesterday. It's not like he looked like he didn't know what he was doing all of a sudden or like he lost confidence. But more to the point, Chiyo Shoma really likes those grappling battles. He seems, I say seems because, again, I am not a hyper expert by any means in this sport. I just enjoy watching it and talking about it. But he seems to have a vulnerability, not necessarily like a ton of trouble, but a vulnerability to guys who come directly at him and don't give him a chance to get into that grapple mode. If he gets the belt, he's probably going to find a way to win. But Ichi Yamamoto has just got a good burst right now. And even against Sadano Umi, he got that initial push. If he does that to Chiyo Shoma, I think there's a good chance he just blows him out of the ring before any of the grappling tricks can come into play. Ichi Yamamoto to win. Kota Shoho and Azumaru. Kota Shoho is 4-1 against Azumaru. They fought five times in a row. Azumaru won the first. Kota Shoho won the next four. He's maybe not fighting like somebody who is 5-3, like I mentioned yesterday, but he's finding ways to win, and I don't have a reason to think he's going to lose to a guy who he's had a lot of success against. A lot of success against. Kota Shoho to win. Yutakiyama and Teratsuyoshi. Teratsuyoshi finally gets to fight somebody who is not a mid-ranker. This is the level at which he tends to struggle, but Yutakiyama is not a mid-rank wrestler who happens to have, you know, slipped due to a very bad record or something. He's in his happy spot. So this should be a fight that Teratsuyoshi has a better chance of winning, but he doesn't seem to really be finding his footing. Not a slipping joke, given what's happened in this tournament so far. Yutakiyama's won three of four against him. That seems to be all of the difference, but I don't have a reason to pick Teratsuyoshi despite this. I will give it to Yutakiyama. Shimano Umi and Mio Giryu. Shimano Umi has done really well against people that he has had a lot of success against in the past. He has not done well when that isn't the case. Mio Giryu is 7 and 1 against him. Mio Giryu to win. Kotoeko and Aoyama. I went back and forth about this fight a lot. I've put that 51 on both sides multiple times before I put it on Koto Echo. It comes down to this. They have a 4-4 four and four lifetime history. They have literally alternated who won every time out. Nobody has won two in a row against the other. If you believe that that's important and it should continue, Aoyama wins this fight. One thing I've noticed in the time that I have spent watching Sumo is that Aoyama seems to be affected by mindset more than most guys. Maybe not as much as Shodai, but more than most guys. With the success at the start of the fight, or the start of the Basho, he was just on a roll and smacking dudes. When he lost to Wakamoto Haru yesterday, that was a good chance for him to get back into the lead, and it did not work out. I am concerned he is going to just kind of get into a negative mindset, and this is such a close matchup, whatever slight advantage he might have goes away with that. If he is not 100% on point, he doesn't win this fight, and I think there's a really good chance that's exactly what happens given the last two days. So I pick Koto Echo here. Nishikigi and Takara Fuji. Takara Fuji put up a hell of a fight yesterday. All props to him. That was a battle. It's not like he is not putting up much of a fight. He doesn't look like Meisei, who was, you know, on fucking heroin in the last tournament or something. He just looked half asleep. Takara Fuji is battling, but it still didn't work. He's got a 4-2 lifetime advantage against Nishikigi. I don't care. We continue to ask Takara Fuji to prove he can win before we pick him. Nishikigi to win. Wakamoto Haru and Tochi Notion. They fought twice, split the fights. I watched those fights. When Wakamoto Haru won, he just blitzed uh, Tochi Notion and just shot him backwards out of the ring. When Tochi Notion won, he had a good tachi eye, stood Wakamoto Haru up, and still it was a stalemate. They were standing in place for a little while, just not able to control each other. Wakamoto Haru got I, I don't know exactly what the the move is I, I don't know how to describe it but Tochi Notion got a better grip 
Wakamoto Haru tried to sleep, slip his hand inside uh, of Tochi Notion's arm in order to get the grip back, it threw off his balance and he got pushed out of the ring. What this says to me is that Wakamoto Haru has a better chance of winning straight away and can still battle back if he doesn't get that instant win. This gives him an advantage, so I will pick him here. Ura and Okunoumi. This is also a 1-1 lifetime head-to-head -head matchup, and I again watched both of their fights. When Ura won, you know, he did his moving, got his good movement going around the ring, found a moment to drive in, push Okunoumi back. When he lost, he was trying to do his over-the-shoulder throw. Okunoumi just stepped back and let him fall down. So Ura proved he can just go at Okunoumi and win. Okunoumi probably can do the same, but I haven't seen it, so I will give this to Ura. Tamawashi and Endo. Their head-to-head -head is wild. Endo won the first six between them. Tamawashi then won the next 11, which is, if anything, the biggest thing you can point to towards the theory of, well, this guy's had success against the other, I should pick him, as not necessarily being the best approach to picking these fights. Because if I had done that, I would have been picking Endo for at least five fights in a row and been wrong. So, who wins here? It's 16-12 lifetime for Tamawashi. More recent history has been uh, more balanced. Endo won the last one in March. Tamawashi won the three before that. But let's be honest. Tamawashi is simply fighting at a higher level than Endo right now. If for no other reason, that gives him the edge. Kotonowaka and Hokuto Fuji. Hokuto Fuji, no matter how he's doing, is a lot of fun to watch because he just tries to drill people with his face off the jump every single time. It's great. Katona Waka should be good enough to not just eat the headbutt and get thrown out of the ring. I think he is. I assume he is. And if that doesn't work, he should win this fight. Dude, I have been trying to give you credit. Please don't prove me wrong here. Daisho and Kiribayama. This, just like the fight yesterday that I said it's a, one that Daisho is really good at losing, is a fight that Daisho is really good at winning. Kiribayama has a 5-3 lifetime advantage. He's also won the last two. So initially, I give him the edge. But I was curious, because their fighting styles seem like Daisho should be better, but again, not an expert, so I watched their last three fights. Daisho lost when he tried to get into a lot of movement, which is not really what he does as well as just going forward or just, you know, standing guys up. And he lost when he slipped. When he got his feet set and just went directly at Kiribayama, Kiribayama never really got a comfortable position and wasn't able to, you know, put up much of a fight. Daisho is very much in that mindset right now where he is just going at dudes. Win or lose, he is playing his game. And if he does that, I think he has a good chance of winning this fight. So I am going to go against the numbers, which I said I wasn't going to do, but I really think the other evidence argues for it this time, and I will pick him to win. Takiyasu and Hoshoryu. I don't know about Hoshoryu, man. Hoshoryu somehow loses fights he really shouldn't lose. How does he lose to Shodai? Granted, there should have at least been a mono e. I don't know that he got robbed necessarily, but the judges should have stepped in there. Takiyasu has never lost to Hoshoryu, 4-0 lifetime. In this Basho, yes, he has an amazing record against Matakiyumi, and he lost that fight. But other than that, he hasn't really had a very good record and sometimes a terrible record against the guys who have beaten him. But in, in his wins, those are guys he's had some success against. Well, if he's had the success against Hoshoryu and Hoshoryu is somehow finding ways to lose fights, I think Takiyasu really does have an edge here. Now, given all of this, Hoshoryu is probably just going to find a way to do something new and, you know, yeet Takiyasu in five seconds. But this one, I just don't have a reason, a specific reason to think that'll happen. So, sure, back to the safety blanket. Let's just call it what it is. 
Abi versus Shodai. Okay, Shodai won yesterday, and it was a fight that he shouldn't have won. But he really didn't show any kind of dominance in the victory. He kind of slipped through with it. And a guy, if a guy comes right at him, he just seems to not know what to do. Like, the way that Terano Fuji's body is sort of broken against guys who come at him with a lot of power, Shodai's mind seems to be broken against the same thing. This is exactly what Abi does. I would be surprised to see this fight last more than 10 seconds. Abi to win. Matakiyumi and Takano Show. Matakiyumi has not been fighting at the level we've seen for the last few Bashos. Granted, he's won five in a row against Takano Show, but that doesn't necessarily mean a ton. Granted, Takano Show is fighting great. But if you look at his last five fights, all victories after a one and two start, none of those opponents are at the same level as Matakiyumi. There are sometimes people who we think should be at a similar level. Cough, cough, Katona Waka, cough, cough. But they have not been fighting at that level. But Takayumi, as much as he hasn't done great, and as much as he hasn't looked quite like the super high-level Matakayumi that we've seen recently, should be good enough to find this win. But Takayumi, crossing my fingers. Takakesho and Wakatakakage. Wakatakakage is 3-5 and five despite having a lifetime winning record against every single guy he's fought except Kiribayama. That's not good especially when Takakesho is 5-2 and two against him. Takakesho is looking rock solid and taking advantage of his aggression, which is probably the best way to beat him at this point, is not something Waka Takakage is super prone to do. I don't see how Waka Takakage can be considered a favorite as much as I really would like to see him succeed. The whole Ozeki thing seems pretty cool and I'd love to see that happen, but man, at this point, He's, he's got to be gagging for a win, but I don't know how he gets it here. Takakesho to win. Terano Fuji and Tobizaru. Have you seen how big Terano Fuji is? Have you seen how small Tobizaru is? The strategy for beating Terano Fuji is not something Tobizaru can accomplish. I could have picked 60, 70, 80, 90. It doesn't really matter. I picked 80 because I'm sick of seeing the zero there. If Terano Fuji shows up, I don't see how he loses this fight. If Tobizaru wins, it's because lightning struck Teru, or, well, I guess we'll have to see what else could possibly be wrong with the guy. I don't know how Tobizaru could possibly win this in anything even remotely resembling a just world. Terano Fuji, big win. And that'll do it for our Day 9 Natsu Basho 2022 picks. As always... Throw a like on the video, that'd be cool. Say something in the comments, that'd be cool too. We'll have my top 10 picks and the randomizer's top 10 picks at the end of the video. Other than that, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.